Hey guys, it's Cullen here. I'm back with another episode of Factorio Quick Tips, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking about junctions and stations. Um, so, in most of my games, I find myself using T junctions like this more often than not. Um, I mean, this saves about two weeks old from what it is, from what the game looks like now. But you'll see, my junctions are simple. There's a little bit of spaghetti in it because, well, that's what you—that's what happens in Factorio. But ultimately, most junctions are a form of T junction. I don't bother with large junctions. They're not effective for the volumes of traffic that you put through. If you're sending one train a minute through junctions like this, um, they're they're not going to have a slowdown. So you may as well do the simplest junction you can. Now, if you're trying to push through more than five a minute, you might need to think about a larger junction, but you're just not pushing that much traffic. And if you are, well, at this point in the game, you're way ahead of what this tutorial needs to show you. So, I like to use these nice, simple T-junctions. And we stay off the train track so I don't get... And in most of my games, I don't bother putting a chain signal in front of it. But in this example, I, I, I am because it, it's a good thing to have because keeping a train out of a junction. Say, say a train here was turning left, so it was coming across this line here, and it got stuck on this out signal here, it would block the entire signal for trains going the other way. So you'd put a chain signal here so that when it does, if it needs to go this way and this signal is red, which we could quite easily simulate that by putting a train here. So it'll go straight through, but it won't um, turn in. So when it comes back, it'll see this signal's red, so it'll actually wait here. So a train coming underneath will work just fine. And, and that is the ultimate goal of what you need your junctions to do. You don't want to block cross uh, traffic by a crossing train. Oh, that's not going to do what I want to do. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, my other tutorial covered that more in detail. If you did need a large junction, and I just picked on four-way junctions here because they're nice to visualize, they're nice to work out. Now, this is a pretty basic junction. Its biggest flaw is you can only have one train pass these chain signals at a time. Uh, four chain signals, four exit signals. Um, nice and simple to build. You just put it down and it's fine. You could make it more compact. I just wanted to um, just make it look somewhat neat. You can do do it however you like. And then you step up to something that's almost two times. Well, it would be over two times the size of it. Um, signals everywhere just to try and get some isolation. So if a train is here, this top line here, and parked on this signal, a train going the other way won't have to stop. And the larger you make it, the easier it is to do it. Um, so chain signal on the entrance, it's turning right. Um, there's a signal here, this is an exit signal. Um, this is also an exit signal. This one here is only to isolate this to say, um, to this chain signal. If that's the direction you're going, do not go through this signal. Um, a train can park here, nice and safe. A train can park here, nice and safe. The next safe parking spot, there isn't even one there at the end. Wow. So if I was to do this properly, I'd need to probably have these angles all the way out here, like uh, somewhere here, just to make it so it would isolate. So the center doesn't lock up when you send trains through it. Now, when designing junctions, you should be looking to split before you merge. So any tracks, uh, trains leaving a junction, so unless you're going straight through and you need to leave, you should always split before you try to merge other trains. It's a pretty common tactic in Transport Tycoon. Um, which is where a lot of these designs would have ultimately originated from. There's a lot of detail over there. Um, so yeah, you split them before they merge back in. Um, 
That means you're not doubling the traffic if you have a lot of traffic on the line. Personally, I would just, if I wanted a four-way junction, I would have two of these and I would space them with a, um, a distance in between that a train can park in. That's only because I don't run enough trains. I run a few trains. We have a look. What's that? Nine trains? Oh, including this one. So, nine trains. All going to eight different mine sites. It's not a lot of trains. So, that's my thoughts on uh, junctions. That just keep it simple. If you're needing to build something like this big one, you're way past needing this video anyway. So let's take a quick look at stations. I, I think I would have briefly covered them before. Um, the new, how they are now in 0.13 and above, um, after they change the um, the sprite for the the carriages. The carriages are exactly uh, six squares long, and they have a space of one square, so it's perfect for um, medium power poles because you can have uh, six inserters between them. That's also vertically as well. The distance is the same. There's not much to say about them except, you know, put, put unload into a chest and then load onto a belt. And if you have a look at my Let's Play, there's a lot of, you know, onto a belt, you can do snakes, you can do single lines. There's so much you can do. Um, currently my design is a four unloads per station and there's basically just like that. And then I feed them together. That way you get two full belts. Well, close to two full belts. Um, and then you can merge them together, whatever you want to do. That's a pretty simple design. Uh, it should actually be like that. Um, I'm using red belts for my stations, but I'm sure people have worked out how to get six uh, blue belts working. That all being said, and you just merge them down to two lines, you'd be fine with that. Um, if you want, you can... We'll just get rid of these guys. You could send these under the train tracks and out the other side. And there you go. You can basically do the same on the other side, so... And loading stations are pretty simple, they're just, uh, the reverse, except, uh, I generally put splitters, um, I generally just do four-way, and then splitters into chests, etc, etc, but these guys are, you send them underneath, you can send them backwards, in my current game, I've reconfigured it, so each station loads, um, to its own side, but yeah, you don't have to make stations complicated. And at this point, if you're using trains, you should already have a good grasp of uh, belt and inserter mechanics. So there you go. What I do recommend, if, if you want to know more about um, trains, junctions, and other bits and pieces, that you give uh, Open Transport Tycoon a go. It's open source, it's uh, all about trains and junctions. I certainly learnt a lot of this from using the systems over there. I might even do a couple of videos on those just so people can have some reference. Um, I'll probably do a quick let's play, maybe an hour or so with it, just so people can get a feel for it. Um, I've played that game for years, it's always something that I come back to once in a while. and. Uh, build some trains and rails. This game has a lot of that. It has 
and I love it. It's it's good fun. So if you found this helpful, let me know. If you want to know something else, also leave me a comment. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.